Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome back. So we're going to start with an update to our numbers. First, since the last time we talked, 1,580 more Philadelphians have been diagnosed with COVID. As of yesterday, we're seeing an average of 280 new cases per day, which is slightly higher than last week, but still below our peak a few weeks ago. 4% of test results we're receiving are positive, which continues to be a good sign that we're catching most of the virus that's out there. In terms of vaccinations, at least 83.6% of adults have gotten at least one dose and 68.8% of adults, more than two thirds are fully vaccinated. That means that we could see 70% of adults in Philadelphia fully vaccinated on or about October 1st. Yesterday, we reported that 46,500 teens between 12 and 17 have received at least one dose of vaccine. So before we move on, there's one more number I wanted to tell you about today. As of today, the city of Philadelphia and our partners have administered 2 million doses of COVID vaccine. Although it will take another day or so for the dashboard to reflect that accomplishment. In the last nine months, thousands of people many in the health department, but also folks who work at hospitals, federally qualified health centers, pharmacies, the Black Doctors COVID-19 Consortium, FEMA, and more, have persevered and have gotten us to this point. Through snowstorms and heat waves and tornadoes, during the most difficult 18 months that any of us have worked through, we did someone, something that no one thought was possible. Two million vaccines in nine months. I don't know that I'll ever be able to express enough gratitude to everyone who's contributed to this effort. I also don't know that we'll ever be able to fully thank those Philadelphians who have worn their mask, socially distanced, stayed home when they were sick, and most importantly, been vaccinated. This has been an awful time, but seeing this city come together and literally roll up their sleeves to save lives is something we all should be proud of. So next, I wanna talk about schools and COVID. Today, we are posting new guidance on screening in schools and when schools should pause in-person learning due to COVID to our website. As a reminder, schools have a number of safety measures in place to prevent spread and to protect those too young to be vaccinated. First, everyone in a school building must be masked except when they're eating or drinking. Schools must enable physical distancing where they can provide opportunities for good hand hygiene and provide a clean site. We strongly recommend that everyone who's eligible be fully vaccinated. And finally, all schools in Philadelphia have to follow our guidance on contact tracing, screening, and quarantine. We've changed our recommendations on screening testing, and we are now asking that schools follow the CDC's guidance to conduct weekly screening testing for unvaccinated students where possible. This is consistent with the CDC's recommendation that screening testing be offered to students who have not been fully vaccinated, where community transmission is at moderate, substantial, or high levels, such as those in Philadelphia right now. Screening testing should also be offered to all teachers and staff who have not been fully vaccinated, no matter how much community transmission there is. We are also now including tests to stay as an option for schools. This means that schools could allow close contacts of someone who tests positive in school to avoid the need for quarantine if, and this is a big if, the school is able to offer frequent rapid testing and the child tests negative every other day for a week. Next, our recommendations for when schools should pause in-person learning have also changed somewhat. First and most importantly, anyone who has COVID symptoms or doesn't feel well should stay home and get tested. When one or two people in a school test positive, their close contacts should quarantine for, quarantine for up to 10 days if they're unvaccinated. If they're vaccinated, they don't need to quarantine, but they should get tested three to five days after that exposure, so long as they don't have any symptoms and they should make sure to mask in public. And I'll say that everything I'm saying here in terms of the, this protocol is on the website. If three people in a class test positive, that class should pause in-person learning for 10 days. If those three positive cases are in different grades or classrooms, 
the school should treat them like individual cases and just quarantine their close contacts. In the case where six or more people test positive in a grade, the school should call the health department immediately and discuss needing to pause in-person learning for the entire grade. And if three or more grades are paused or more than 3% of the entire school community tests positive, the school should call the health department immediately and discuss needing to pause in-person learning for the entire school. This new guidance is less strict than our guidance before because we've seen that our other safety measures have been successful in containing spread and because we're watching and learning from containment efforts in other places. We believe that it's possible to prevent wider spread of COVID in schools and keep kids in school. This does not mean that there won't be COVID in our schools. Community transmission is high enough that some students, staff and faculty will be exposed at home or outside of the school and could bring it in. But with daily symptom screening, 100% masking, contact tracing and vaccinations, we can stop that person from spreading COVID to others while in school. As with all of our guidance, we'll continue to monitor the situation in our schools and may change this guidance again if needed. Separately from schools, I wanted to point out as a reminder that all healthcare workers in Philadelphia are required to be vaccinated by October 15th. That means if you get your first dose of Pfizer by this Friday, you can still get your second dose before that, before that deadline. You can also get the single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine and make that deadline. Time is running out, so find the closest vaccine site today by visiting phila.gov slash vaccine. To wrap up, if you would like more information, please visit our website at phila.gov slash COVID. If you have questions, please call our COVID call center at 215-685-5488.